Welcome, Tecmo Super Bowl fans. We have another online GB Land Tecmo Super Bowl tournament for you today. Uh, this is a group play game. QB Lions as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers versus Elijah Peterson. Or excuse me, Elijah Peters as the San Diego Chargers. If you haven't seen the video yet between QB Lions and Enemy Fred, we did see QB Lions play with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, this is a matchup that is actually a repeat of the Apocalypse Now championship game between Tecmo Cycle and Coconuts. Caravella with the return. Uh, normally you like to see uh, Arthur Cox uh, on the return or maybe Bernstein if you're looking for the running speed boost. Pro set, run two. Haddock go gobbles up the... Uh, blocker there, and uh, too much traffic for Marion Butts to get through that opening. This time, uh, Butts is running right at the Buccaneers, but really unable to uh, get anything going there on that play. Looking at third and nine. Vlasic lets it fly. Haddix gets sucked up there. Big gain for Elijah Peters. Again with the run two. This time Butts wisely bounces it outside. Goes for six yards. Then I would expect to see that more often now if that play gets called. Run. I'm sorry, pass. Uh, pass one is called. A risky throw up near Haddix there. Time, JJ. QB sneak. Hags could not get down, and Vlasic is in for the score. So, uh, interesting choice here, Mark Vlasic. Uh, a lot of teams prefer that, although with Haddix on the field, a lot of times you'll see uh, people go for Tolliver to get that ball there in a hurry. But a successful first drive for Elijah Peters. And we'll see if QB Lions has what it takes to return uh, this decent here with Cobb and answer on this first possession. And Cobb uh, answering the call. Uh, a couple popcorns, a couple moves, a little help for some blockers, and he's out past the 40 yard line. Uh, Would have liked to see him maybe try to angle towards the sideline there as the man defender uh, catches up. Gil Bird against Gary Anderson. Anderson with a great juke. Great moves there with uh, Gary Anderson, who's a, a very good running back. Uh, the, the challenge usually in this matchup, running the ball, um, is that you'll see uh, often like Leslie O'Neill has the ability to pop for the first two blockers on the offensive line, and it really causes problems for anyone trying to run the ball. Uh, although this time he does not use Leslie O'Neill. Um, this is a middle linebacker. Uh, this time we have a called run three. Second down coming up. So the challenge for uh, the Chargers is to try to keep Vinny from running all over, but looks like he's been sticking with running plays here instead of trying to run out of passing formations. Third down and ten. Why is the check's conditions here? Run hall's in bad. I would like to see what the conditions were on the substitutes. You right off Anderson, the tight end goes into good. It might be a good option to put in instead of Hall. And uh, I'm not quite sure. I didn't see in the lineup there if Cobb is in the lineup. I know that Harvey is. Cobb is usually someone you want in a tight end position. And Ron Hall typically in the wide receiver too if you want optimal blocking. Pass three. And he gets it there too. Mark Carrier for the score. So controlling bird in that situation does leave you open uh, to any potential uncovered. It does give you more speed if the guys are covered, but you're pulling off 
one receiver to cover the field. Typically, near the goal line, you want to control a linebacker. A tough decision, to be sure. Um, but we do see that uh, Leslie O'Neill was not selected. And we have a touchdown. The game is tied. 7-all. Nice drive by QB Lions and good recognition on getting that pass up to Carrier on the burn route on the back of the end zone. Uh, I would expect to see Wayne Haddix controlling, or I should say QB Lions controlling Wayne Haddix for the duration of the game or most of the game. Um, there I think he took just a little bit too much time to recognize that he was over the line of scrimmage and uh, a lot more yards were gained on the ground that time for the last than he really needed to be. Looking at the taps here, it looks like they're both tapping around a 10 right now. Um, don't know if they're both going full speed on their taps. And we'll see if there's a definitive tapping advantage as the game progresses. They had the right target there in... Uh, I think that might be Caravello there on uh, running back two, but uh, just can't deliver the ball accurately. Wide open and dismisses the throw. Running play to Butts. Only a three-yard gain on the play. And we have a called play run on pass four. And uh, wisely, wisely takes the sack. Don't want to risk a short field here. Running some time off the clock, he's going to go ahead and punt it. Elijah Peters playing the field position game. With a defender like Haddix, oftentimes you can get away with calling a run. And... Uh, controlling the field with uh, Haddix, but uh, with the whole field to cover there, uh, he went pass and uh, happened to pick the right play, and uh, looks like QB Lions has an opportunity to go up at halftime. Really any pick of receiver as long as you can get the ball. Slower deliver to Anderson, but I do like him up there. Fifty maximum speed running back, good reception stats. It's not uncommon for people to put Gary Anderson in as a wide receiver instead of a um, instead of a running back, uh, especially if you're playing a team like this. Um, very frequently, I'll see Gary Anderson put at the either the tight end or the wide receiver two position because of hitting power. And very very close for comfort there. Um, jumping attempt to deflect or intercept was not made, but then we had a, a rare drop there. Must be frustrating. Uh, a couple near misses. Risky, risky throw across the field on a called pass play. Those Chargers defenders are there in a hurry. If he could have burned a little more time off the clock, he could have justified going for this on fourth down and trying to do one heave into the end zone at the end of the half. But with 30 seconds on a cold play, if they bottle that up, you're looking at a free three-point attempt. So Elijah Peters is able to get out of bounds, potentially one heave down the end zone. The taps will matter here. We'll see if uh, he rushes them and he doesn't. Haddix is going to cover the back end here. Um, Miller does get free here, so let's see if Taps come into play. I don't think he'll have enough to break away. So the pass is complete. It'll look good on the stat sheet, but nothing is really affected there. So uh, looking like the, both teams are playing it fairly close to the vest. Um, surprisingly, uh, with this defense, uh, the San Diego Chargers, uh, they're able to, he was able to run the ball effectively. So the nice thing about uh, an onside kick for the, the team that gets it, it's treated like a fumble, like a turnover, um, and on a fumble, you cannot re-fumble it uh, as a recovering team, so you can take all the time you want trying to burn clock off, dodge defenders without worrying about putting the ball on the ground again, and I'm certain that was just a you know an attempt to try to get a full meter kick, and... Uh, little lag kicking in there and it leads to the unintentional onside kick um, normally as player two it's I think it's less than half a percent chance or near half a percent chance to actually get uh, a successful onside kick as player two and we have ourselves a blocked pass on first down 
and we're going to second down and 10 here uh, in Chargers territory for QB Lions. This time, the offensive line showing its colors, the drones getting through and breaking that play up. Third and 11. O'Neal just uh, not making any contact with any drones there. Normally with the hitting power of a Leslie O'Neal, you want to try to find a, a, a blocker with low hitting power and take him out of the equation and then have the other drones on your team try to gobble up the reigning blockers and get that isolation opportunity to tap tackle. And uh, QB Lions going with a conservative approach here, taking the first down. Uh, probably had a touchdown to carry her there if he lets go of the ball. Uh, he was undefended. Run for five yards on first down, pretty uneventful. Bird this time, the chosen defender, um, goes for the dive. I don't think that was necessary in that situation. I think he just needed to, to grapple and create that blockage in the hole. And uh, instead of di instead he dives, he misses, and then there's a um, the first down game here. So we have first and goal from the nine. Uh, he's going right up to the top. He recognizes that formation in play. And really late on getting back, uh, the, the line of scrimmage was back. Uh, at the eight yard line or so, seven or eight yard line, and Vinny runs all the way in for the score. So um, I think he was confused there. You, he, he was not able to pass the ball at that juncture. So definitely defensive oversight there um, in reacting, afraid of a pass that would never happen. Caravello remains a return man. And again, usually you want to see Bernstein or Cox in that situation. Cox has the hitting power. Bernstein has the 44 running speed. Maximum speed is controlled by who your right tackle is. Marion Butts with a bounce to the outside. Really nothing uh, there. It, it looks like quite frequently we've seen a run called, passes called there, throws to a covered receiver. And uh, that's never a good formula with Wayne Haddix there. His interception rating versus the pass control of Vlasic is just, it's not a good combination. And don't know if he was trying to go that time JJ route or not, but uh, it did not work out that time. And even with the time JJ, unless that play is called, uh, most likely Haddix is going to be in front of that route, and that's a recipe for an interception. So we now have a two-touchdown uh, deficit here as the third quarter is going to be coming to a close. Single back formation. Haddock's again on the defense. We have a pass two called. Miller's open up front. This is a situation where he's just going to launch it and hoping that uh, Haddock's is not in the equation. Um, Poor throw made uh, the, the correct, based on his position, the correct throw and who was covering who would have been to try to throw to the running back two streaking down the field. Um, and even though Haddix is not involved in the play, covering the front there, the Tampa Bay secondary does its job. Uh, minimal gain, uh, one yard for the Buccaneers. And the running game really not something that is... Uh, seems to be helping too much um, you might be sitting on pass three that's been the play that's done the most damage to uh, Elijah Peters so uh, not surprised if he's going to try to continue to take that away pass four called lets it go to Cobb gets the JJ I don't know if he was trying to time it that way Kind of a risky throw in that situation, I think. Um, you just want to try to you know, inch along with with Vinny in that situation. The defenders were down the field. It worked out for him, but uh, I think the right play there would be to try to run out of the end zone and get some yards with Vinny. Uh, loss on the play, second and 15 coming up. Pass one is called. Um, 
not a whole lot of people open. He throws to a cover Kron Hall, and uh, really is going QB Lions way here. That's uh, uh, a recipe for an interception there, and uh, worked out for him. Pass two called here. Would have liked to see just a, a moment of hesitation there. Um, could have tried to throw over the top. Uh, looks like the expectation was that O'Neal was thinking that Vinny was going to run. And I think there could have been some manipulation there to go over the top. But great run here by Anderson. Running game was bottled up for a while. But he's able to take it to the house. So Gary Anderson doing some work here for QB Lions. We have a three-touchdown deficit, and uh, the game is all but in the books here. Um, with the percentage of onside kicks, uh, it's almost impossible at this point to come back. Two touchdowns would have been asking a lot at that point again because you have to basically play defense and hope for a turnover. Ball go to Harmon. Harmon's really not going to beat anyone down the field. Um, if you're trying to use a, you probably want to have Miller, even in his bad condition in that situation, um, unless anyone else has, has jumped up in the world. You might even, you know, you know, risk putting like even Marion Butts in that situation. Um, just for the speed to get someone down the field uh, if you can get squeeze that ball and I would also probably be switching to uh, as you're trying to uh, you're unlikely to get JJ's in these situation with these receivers uh, we try to just beat someone on the angle uh, with potentially a, instead of uh, Vlasic using BJ Tolliver very very difficult to uh, this secondary this late in the game and uh, late turnover uh, isn't, isn't going to matter too much it, it potentially prevents a uh, uh, you know, another point scored um, you know for the the tiebreaker situation we have a cold pass one this one is intercepted though again let's we'll see if he goes tries to go for a touchdown or tries to kick a field goal doesn't go for the field goal I, I think um, you know maybe a little nervous against uh, uh, Leslie O'Neill. And uh, actually was able to es escape there uh, in that called play and have a chance at the end for some points to carry her. But uh, alas, it didn't work for him. But no matter, the game is in hand. 28-7, QB Lions. Uh, observations on the game. Um, some risks were taken that ended up working out okay for uh, QB Lions, but in other games, uh, don't be surprised if those don't work out. So maybe a little more conservative, uh, keeping the ball on the ground with uh, uh, Vinny uh, typically is a better way to go. Uh, you'll see players that use uh, Leslie O'Neal uh, in this matchup with a little more effectiveness, uh, knowing how to pop for and keep players and can really limit that running game. Uh, for uh, the Chargers and Elijah Peters, uh, I would say, um, you know, just you know, a little bit of a, a different personnel grouping, um, and then using Tolliver to uh, get passes into tighter widows with that delivery. The pass control against Haddix really isn't going to cause much of a difference. The thing is that you just can't do JJ's uh, uh, effectively with a, a quarterback with that kind of passing speed. But being able to throw to stationary targets and then uh, maybe you know, changing the, the blocking situation of who is going to be playing at wide receiver two and your tight end, uh, getting some hitting power on the field. Uh, and then you know having more plays running at Haddix. Uh, um, right now, I think there was just the one play that went up his way. Um, you really want to, he's the main guy that's going to do the damage against you. Run at Haddix, uh, take your yards, and uh, try to get in the clear with Marion Butts. But uh, just food for thought in the future games. And uh, if you have thoughts on what could have been done differently, please leave them in the comments. If you like the game, like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. And if you want to see more of our tournament footage, 
hit subscribe and you'll get alerts when our games are being uploaded. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time on GB Land Techo.